Okay, so this week we're going to talk a little bit about town drawing um, and specifically drawing individual houses. So I'm actually using a map which is fairly well along at this stage. Um, if you run across my How to Draw Towns map, we're kind of on the final stage now. Um, so the steps I take to get to this stage are start off by drawing the terrain. So that would be the coastlines that you can see at the bottom there, uh, including all the river up to there um, and all these cliffs which you can see kind of down here. So that gives us an idea of the terrain the town sits in. Then go on to do the locate the, like the main locations that build up the structure of the town. So you're going to have your castle down here, your docks for trade to come in and out. In this case, there's an upper docks as well, uh, where a lot of trade goes up the river. Um, and then other things like uh, this is a fish market. Um, there's a boat yard down here. There's a main market here, a barracks, a smithy, over the top right here's a quarry stuck up here in the corner. Um, and then the main routes in and out of the town. So here you've got this entrance here and then another entrance coming down the cliffs around here. Um, and then you also want to place the defences because we're talking about a fantasy world here. Uh, all sorts of nasty things that want to kill you. So you build walls to defend against them. So here is some walls around the top of the quarry, and then a defence for the various entrances into the city. So we have two main entrances here and here, and then obviously the river entrance here, which gets heavily fortified by the castle itself, and a bunch of seaside defences. Um, and then upriver, I'm going to assume it's fairly calm up in that direction, and these cliffs are big, so there's just a little bit of wall here. Uh, right, so once you've done that, you place the roads, so in this case, the road runs down through the single entrance, runs pretty much straight to the river, because you want to get across the river, get to the castle. That's one of your main power centers and the main destination. And then the road carries on and goes back out the other side. A little detour following the terrain. Your roads have to go where they can go, rather than going through solid rock. Obviously, we don't have major earth moving equipment in this part of the world. And then you also go up to your economic centres, so in this case your quarry, and then I take another fairly major road up around the top, past the windmill, and then up to the, uh, this is a, a stone elevator, so you have these cranes and winches to get the, the stone from the quarry up these cliffs, they can then get to the warehouses and the upper docks, and then get away to the north. Okay, so that's kind of the backstory to the town, and that gives you some idea of how I, the process I went through to get to this point. Um, as you can see, the actual featured locations are already sketched in. Um, in this case, they're all drawn by hand. Um, I tend to draw them a little bit bigger than this, and then just move them and rescale them down to, uh, to get them to the right size. What you're seeing at the moment is about three times the final print resolution. Um, so this is working at 300 dpi um, at 100 percent on the computer uh, right but now what we want to do is fill in all these nice little wiggly roads with houses and this is the thing that takes the time when it comes to town mapping um, the way i'm going to do it this time uh, is to use the pen tool so this is what i've got selected at the moment you can see it's this tool here um, a lot of the time people use the pen tool to do kind of really nice smooth flowing curves uh, that's not what I'm going to be using it for today. Um, so what this does is it sets up a, a set of paths. So if you go to your layers panel, this is layers, channels, and paths, here are your paths. So I've started with a couple of these houses already. So you can see the lines which are the paths there. Now unlike other things in Photoshop, a path is editable after the fact. And by that I mean that you can select a path. So here I just pressed Command to change the pen tool to the select tool here. And you see I can move these anchor points. So I can actually change the shape of these paths later on if I want to, and that's hugely useful. The other really handy thing is that it's a perfectly clean and accurate vector. By that I mean if we zoom in, right, you see everything else gets pixelated, but these paths still remain absolutely precise, okay? So this means that your paths uh, don't, aren't affected by any raster, anti-aliasing, anything like that. It's an absolutely precise way to define a shape. 
And obviously what we're doing here is we're defining an awful lot of shapes. So it's very useful to use the, uh, the path tool to lay out your houses. Um, the downside is we've got a lot of houses and it just takes time to bang them in. So what we're going to do now is just lay in a couple of houses. So I'm just going to fill in sections down by the docks. Now, down by the docks, touch me. Mm. Coffee at Sunday morning. Um, down by the docks, you're likely to have the older part of town. Uh, this is where the town's likely to have begun. So you're probably going to have smaller, older houses down this point. They're going to be slightly more jumbled. Um, and definitely less planned. Um, so let's just put in a few small houses here. So as you can see, I'm just clicking, and then when I come back to complete the path, you get that little circle beside the pen tool, and that just locks it off. Now, I'm sure you're looking at that going, but that's not square. That's not exactly right. No building's gonna actually look that wonky, even if it is old and badly made. This comes down to the point that there's a limit to how accurate you want to be just so that you actually get things done um, and this just comes down to the fact that what these houses are doing unlike the featured locations nobody should ever really be looking at these houses they're not going to look at it carefully and go wait a minute that looks a bit funny what they're actually doing here is that it's it's adding texture so the viewer that's not quite going to work so the viewer is going to look at this and see an area filled with buildings. They're not going to see individual buildings necessarily. They're not actually going to be looking for them. So what we're doing here is we're giving the impression of urban sprawl without actually having to worry too much about detailing what that urban sprawl is. And to that effect, that's why I'm just I'm using some different shapes, some L shapes, just to break up the monotony of rectangles and squares. And that just gives it a little bit of visual texture, and it basically just means that the viewer is not going to get, they're going to get lulled into a sense of there being more detail than there really is. So anytime you're going to add just a little bit of variation, even if it isn't anything to do with what it would actually look like, a little bit of variation goes an awfully long way into getting the viewer to do some of the work for you. And when it comes to doing cities and towns and hundreds and hundreds of buildings, getting the viewer to do some work for you is an extremely useful thing. Otherwise, you can be here forever. So you can see that if I was worrying about getting each of these perfectly accurate and straight and historically the right size and all that kind of thing, I could be here forever. Um, but in this case, we're just laying in some shapes quickly, and that means that we're going to get... A pretty good idea of a town quite quickly without needing to worry too much about historical accuracy or exact building shapes. Okay, so that gives you a quick session. Now, now you can see that just there we've laid in this whole little area. I look kind of nice and jumbled and all the rest of it. And um, what's going to happen is when we fill in these with colour, these are going to be fairly abstract shapes. But all the feature locations, the ones that are already drawn in here, are going to be coloured and highlighted and they're going to really stand out. So what we're going to really see is a collection of feature locations which kind of locate the main uh, parts of our town. And then a bunch of nice abstract shapes which kind of fill in the remainder of the town and make it look like a town. And that gives anybody running a game with this town the freedom to just build in whatever they want in those areas. Um, so... Once you've done all of that, uh, we can then use these vectors to actually fill in some actual house styles because we, obviously at the moment, we can't, if we were to print this out, those don't show up at all. That's just vector information. It's not actually done anything to change the look of the picture yet. Um, and so we need to use those vectors down the line to actually give us something to look at. Um, right, but that's a job for another day. Uh, this I will just carry on with quickly. Okay, so we've now done a lot more buildings. Uh, so if we now zoom in, you can just have a look around. You can see the various building shapes here. So we've filled in all of this extra space. There are lots and lots and lots of little buildings. Um, and also if we go to the outskirts of the town, I've put in some buildings for farmland. So we've got a couple of just little shapes scattered around, which gives the impression of some little settlements 
uh, there. Now there's also some variation in sizes. So just to try and, yeah, you know, so before break it up, give it a bit more visual interest. Um, you've got some very small buildings down here, kind of little slums or outhouses uh, or shacks, which are kind of built into the corner of these cliffs. You have some more regular shapes. So here we've got a very rectilinear section. You've got some less regular shapes. So here's like uh, an extended terrace. Uh, so a load of buildings which have kind of grown together to create this slightly more organic shape. Um, near the quarry, he has a very regimented set of buildings here. So that would be like the workers' quarters. So equivalent to like the old mining uh, houses, the old mining terraces um, in the north of England towns in the UK. Um, so just rather than making sure that you build buildings all the same everywhere, try to break up the shapes you use. Try to use different sizes. Try to give some indication. Also, you can use negative space pretty well. So this is the empty space left around your building. So in this case, we've left kind of nice openings in the middle of a set of buildings here or towards the edge of a, a cliff or just to give some kind of uh, variation. So you're not trying to fill all the space. You're just trying to um, give an impression of lots of buildings. Um, right, now just because I mentioned at the beginning that the joy of using vectors is that you can um, is that you can actually vary wrong tool you can go back and you can edit these things so for example if we go to this building here we see that that's you know I was saying that you don't want everything to be exactly rectilinear um, but you know you probably want to so I've just clicked on it and I have all the anchor points so I can vary that like that so that's using the direct selection tool here now, if I instead go to the path selection tool, then I can just pick a path and I can move it around. So I can do that. You can also use the transform tool once you've got one of these selected. So you can rotate it and move it and then establish that there. So the vectors allow you to, once you've got your map, as you can then zoom out, have a bit of a look around, see what you can see, and then think, oh, you know, should we change? this building or that building or move it around. Uh, okay, and now I'm going to do another short video on exactly how to go about making this all look pretty. Uh, but for the time being, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the selection tool. So that's this one here, load path as a selection. Okay, that takes the paths that I've created. And I'm gonna create a new layer. And I'm going to just fill this one with white so there you go um, and then i'm just going to quickly steal uh, i'm going to put a single stroke line on it with a stroke of one pixel and i'm going to drop the central blending uh, fill opacity down to let's go for 60 percent yeah, maybe even 50. Okay, and that basically, you can now see that even when I, even though I don't have the path selected anymore, we now can see the buildings quite cleanly. Uh, and I'm also going to make the roads back to a white. Uh, right, there you go. So this means that when we zoom out, you can see all the buildings um, and you can see the roads as well. So that gives us the basic layout of the city. And the next time, we will be talking about how to turn our, or different methods to turn this kind of nice map of floor plans of houses into a more three-dimensional map. Although, as you can see, this map would probably work just fine as it is at this stage.